I hope I win the lottery. I hope my car doesn't break down. I hope she will go out with me. What does it mean to hope? And more specifically, what is biblical hope? If you ask many Christians what faith is, they will respond by quoting Hebrews 11 verse 1. There we read, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. But defining hope is a completely different proposition. There is not an easy Bible verse to point to, like there is for faith. Normally, we use the word hope as a substitute for the word wish. I hope I win the lottery is the same as I wish I win the lottery. Hope normally means we are uncertain of the outcome. But biblical hope is different. Biblical hope is not just a desire for something good in the future. Instead, biblical hope combines both desire and confident expectation for the future. Biblical hope not only has a desire for something good in the future, it expects it to happen. It has confidence. There is a moral certainty that the good we expect and desire will be done. Moral certainty? What do you mean by that? Certainty can be approached three ways. There is mathematical certainty. I am mathematically certain that 2 plus 2 equals 4. There is logical certainty. I am logically certain that if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. But what is moral certainty? And why do we call it moral? It's called moral because it is rooted in the commitment of the will of people. And the will is the seed of morality. That is, we can only speak of moral right and wrong in relationship to acts of will. So whatever has to do with the will is an issue of morality. And moral certainty is a certainty that is based on acts of will. Let me give an example. I have a strong moral certainty that I will remain married to my wife as long as we both shall live. This certainty is not mathematical or logical, but based on the character of our wills and the promises of God, which are expressions of the character of His will. We have over 40 years of evidence about the nature and commitments of our wills concerning our marriage. When we talk about our marriage future, we don't use ordinary terms of hope. We don't say, we hope we don't get divorced. We speak in confidence, because the character of a God-centered will is like iron. Could we be wrong? Yes. So why do we have such strong confidence our marriage will last? Because we know something about human will. There is a kind of certainty that comes from knowing the character of people. It is not infallible, but it is secure and confident. Biblical hope is not just a desire for something good to happen. It is a confident expectation and desire for something good in the future. Biblical hope has moral certainty in it. When the word says, hope in God, it does not mean, cross your fingers. It means to expect great things from God. In Hebrews 6 verses 9 to 12 we see this illustrated. After warning his readers that it's possible for people who've had great religious experiences to turn away from Christ and go beyond the point of no return, he says, Though we speak in this way, yet in your case, beloved, we feel sure of better things, things that belong to salvation. For God is not unjust so as to overlook your work and the love that you have shown for his name in serving the saints, as you still do. And we desire each one of you to show the same earnestness to have the full assurance of hope until the end so that you may not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. The reason the writer is sure his readers won't fall away is that they've not only been loving servants for God's sake in the past, but are still serving. You see that emphasis on perseverance at the end of verse 10? You showed love in serving the saints in the past, and you still do. Their religious experience wasn't a temporary decision. It was continuing. Perseverance in godliness is the proof of the genuineness of a person's salvation. In verses 11 and 12, he tells them to press on and not become lazy. Now the battle is described in terms of hope, not just love and service. And we desire each one of you to show the same earnestness in realizing the full assurance of hope until the end. In other words, with all the zeal of the past that enabled you to work and love in the name of Christ, with all that zeal, keep on pursuing the full assurance of hope to the end. What does the full assurance of hope mean in verse 11? It means hope which is confident, hope that has moral certainty. It is not crossing your fingers and wishing for the best. Verse 12 implies that hope and faith are almost the same. Verse 11 says, Go hard after full assurance of hope. Verse 12 says the result of that pursuit of hope is that you will be like those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. The term full assurance is found one other place in Hebrews 10.22. There it is full assurance of faith instead of full assurance of hope. It says, Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. Then in the next verse, it says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Hope is something that shouldn't waver because it's rooted in the faithfulness of God. There is moral certainty because the will and purpose of God is like iron, not chalk. So what's the difference between the full assurance of faith and the full assurance of hope? Hope is the part of faith that focuses on the future. In biblical terms, when faith is directed to the future, you can call it hope. But faith can focus on the past and the present. You see this in Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. 
Here's a paraphrase of this verse. Wherever there is full assurance of hope, there is faith. Faith is the full assurance of hope. Biblical faith is a confident expectation and desire for good things in the future. But it's more than that. It's also the conviction of things not seen, and some of these are not future. Verse 3 reads, By faith we understand that the world was created by the Word of God. Faith can look back to creation as well as forward. So faith includes hope, but is more than hope. Faith is our confidence in the Word of God, and when that word refers to the future, you can call it hope. Hope is faith in the future tense. Hope is an essential part of faith. Take away hope and the definition of faith in Hebrews 11 verse 1 is destroyed. We are not merely saved by grace through faith. We are saved by grace through hope. Paul shares this same view of hope in Romans 4 verse 18. He describes Abraham as the great example of faith, and in particular, of justification by faith. In Romans 4 verse 22 he says, This is why Abraham's faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. The faith Paul is talking about is the faith that God would fulfill his promise by giving him a son. The faith which justified Abraham was faith in the future work of God. Verse 21 says he was fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. In other words, he had what Hebrews 6 verse 11 called the full assurance of hope. Biblical hope is never based on what is possible with man. Biblical hope looks to the promise of God. And when it does, it becomes the full assurance of hope the expectation of great things from God. Abraham's faith was his strong confidence in the reliability of God's word, and Abraham's hope was his strong confidence in the fulfillment of God's promise. So whenever faith in God looks to the future, it can be called hope. And whenever hope rests on the word of God, it can be called faith. This is Pastor John. God bless you.